You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, bribing me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh shepherd me, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forever. Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please stand and join the Bishop James Pecchio and Father James with our opening hymn number 603, Hallelujah, Sing to Jesus.
pandemic, I couldn't help thinking that, are we ever going to see you again? But yes, God is good because you are back. It's been over two years, uh, and I think we would have seen you a lot sooner, but the pandemic kind of slowed things down. We're very happy that you're back again with us. Welcome on behalf of all the parishioners of St. Joseph's Parish, it's Tom, it's Stephen, myself. Uh, welcome, we're glad that you're back. Yeah. <laughs> 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiful people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, excuse me. And the 
her go front her. She had big hard things. And she, she turned around and she said, uh, you know, she said, I'm sorry that I kept staring at you. She said, it's just that you remind me of my son. And my son died in the war. He said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear. She was, he was moved with pity for her, huh? The passion. He said, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. She says, you know, there would be something you could do for me. My son and I used to go shopping together. And she said, when I'm leaving, if you would wave and say goodbye, mother, that would mean the world. Of course, the young man says, so she goes about her checkout, finishes it up, puts all her stuff into her cart, and she turns and looks at the young man. And of course, he says, goodbye, mother. Waves. And she blows him a kiss and off she goes. Then he takes his items and puts them on the counter and the cashier brings them up. He says, that'll be $290. He said, I only have eight items. How could it be $280? He said, well, your mom said you were paying her. <laughs> <laughs> Calling someone your mother doesn't make her your mom. Calling Jesus Christ our Lord doesn't make him our Lord either. Just as calling ourselves Catholic Christians doesn't necessarily make us so. It's one thing to say these things are true. But it's another for them to be true in themselves, to be actually true. The truth, as we know, my brothers and sisters, comes in our living. And our gospel today makes that clear for us. In our gospel today... Jesus gives us the Beatitudes, and by them, tells us how we are to be living our lives as his disciples. In a homily, Pope Francis called the Beatitudes a program for Christianity. Pope Francis called the Beatitudes an identity card for Christians. He said, that's how you know you're a Christian, if you're living the Beatitudes. He said, if you ask yourself how to become a good Christian, this is where you can find Jesus' answer. An answer, he said, that points to an attitude that is currently very much against the tide. The world tells us that happiness, joy, and entertainment are the best things in life. And it looks the other way when there are problems of disease or pain, even in the family. The world does not want to suffer. It prefers to ignore painful situations to cover them up, he said. Only the person who sees things as they are and whose heart mourns will be happy and comforted. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus tells us in the Beatitudes how we should be living as Jesus' disciples today. He tells us exactly who are the people. Who are the people who will be blessed by God? We certainly want to be in that crowd. Blessed are the meek. Blessed the merciful, peacemakers. Blessed those persecuted for the faith and righteousness. Blessed the clean of heart, poor in spirit, those who mourn. These all will be blessed by our Heavenly Father. And at the end we're told, rejoice and be glad when you are insulted slandered or even persecuted because of your beliefs in Jesus. Your reward will be great in heaven. Yes, our gospel today reminds us that genuine faith goes against the grain of our human intelligence and understanding. The way we as humans look at things is generally not the same perspective that God does. Jesus teaches us through the Beatitudes that the spiritual life is a paradox. What God, what seems good to most of us, may not be a good thing in the eyes of God. For us Christians, the Beatitudes serve as the defining characteristics we are to practice in life. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, obviously we're all here in church for this Eucharist because we are disciples the Lord. But the proof of our faith comes in our actions. 
comes in our discipleship, how we live our daily lives, how well we live the identity card of Christians, as Pope Francis called it. Jesus' message to us is clear this Sunday. Living according to God's plan, not the world's. Doing the right thing in our daily lives. That's what counts before our Father in heaven. Jesus asks us today to leave here during this coming week to live as he would live. In our families, at marriages, with our children, or our parents, school or at work, helping the poor and disadvantaged be instruments of his peace. And we all want to do that, you know? But so often the world and all the many distractions of our daily lives can take precedence in our lives. And sometimes we come back here the next week, maybe out without having made great progress in living the Christian identity. Lord wants nothing else than for us to be blessed. He wants us to be blessed. It's up to us to make it a priority in our lives to hear the Lord and let Him convert our hearts over and over again, making us His disciples. Word and deed. That's why we come to the Eucharist so often now, to be nourished by Him. We believe that by eating his body and drinking his blood, that we become more like him, we become what we receive. Uh, we're built up in grace and virtue by receiving the Eucharist. And even just coming in here in the scriptures, hopefully the homily, raises our vision to what God intends for the world, and for how us to live, how we are to live our lives. God gives us a godly vision for our lives. And just being with other disciples, being with other people who are on the same pilgrim way when at times it seems like the whole world might be heading in a different direction. It's helpful for us and encouraging. Um, so Sunday Mass is so good for us. We learned during this terrible pandemic about how important it is huh? when we were forced to receive spiritual communion and watch Mass virtually. We even receive communion in the parking lot. Huh? We lack something. We miss something. So thank you to God for coming here to nourish yourselves. I'm certainly so grateful for you. I certainly want you to know my, my gratitude for you and my prayers and love for you too. Um, I'm so delighted to be on this program way with you as we strive to renew God's kingdom here amongst us by how we live our lives and by our beliefs. I also wish to thank you for persevering during this pandemic time. I certainly want to thank Jim and the deacons and all the minister in this parish. There's no handbook for how to run a church during a pandemic time. So I'm grateful for their uh, creativity and their perseverance throughout this time and uh, keeping the faith alive here in High Bridge. May this Eucharist strengthen us, huh? May it strengthen us to be who we truly are Jesus and Son, His disciples in 2022. Right here in High Bridge. God bless you all.
my gifts are obedient, may they've been restored to those gifts of yours, and that my sin may have lost some disobedience. So, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks and exaltation.
please join in our communion hymn at that first Eucharist, number 555.
find in your church gathered to 